I rise today to once again speak about the ongoing threat from the Trump administration to the health care and guaranteed protections that millions of American families depend upon. President Trump has tried to pass through the Congress repeal plans that would take people's health care away and allow insurance companies to discriminate against people with pre-existing health conditions or refuse to serve them at all. When that legislative repeal effort failed in 2017, instead of working on a bipartisan way to lower health care costs and improve access to care for all Americans, President Trump turned to another tactic, sabotaging our health care system. And there are more Americans uninsured today than there were when he took office. The Trump administration has even gone to court. They've gone to court so, to support a lawsuit that would overturn the Affordable Care Act, including its provisions that protect people with uh, pre-existing health conditions from discrimination. Now just think about that. He's asking a court to strike down health care protections for Americans. If he succeeds, insurance companies will once again be able to deny coverage or charge much higher premiums for the more than 130 million Americans who have some sort of pre-existing health condition, including more than 2 million who live in the state of Wisconsin. What is the President's plan to protect people with pre-existing conditions? He doesn't have one. He never has. And I have to say, I doubt that he ever will. In fact, this administration has expanded what I call junk insurance plans. These are insurance plans that can deny coverage to people with pre-existing health conditions, and they don't have to cover basic and essential health services like prescription drugs or emergency room visits or uh, maternity care. And most of these junk plans don't cover those things. Now, when I spoke about this expansion of what I call junk insurance um, on the Senate floor two weeks ago, one of my Republican colleagues responded and claimed that these plans preserve pre-existing conditions protections and essential health benefits. So today, I wanted to clarify the record and let's look at the fine print together. One of the junk plans currently available in my home state of Wisconsin reads, quote, this plan has a pre-existing limitation provision that may prevent coverage from applying to medical conditions that existed prior to this plan's effective date. Another junk plan that uh, is sold in Wisconsin states that the plan does not comply with the guaranteed essential benefits provided by the Affordable Care Act. To quote directly, the description reads, and I quote, this coverage is not required to comply with certain federal market requirements for health insurance, principally those contained in the Affordable Care Act. The tiny fine print on this particular junk plan instructs individuals to check their coverage carefully to make sure they are, quote, aware of any exclusions or limitation regarding coverage of pre-existing conditions or health benefits, such as hospitalization, emergency services, med maternity care, preventative care, prescription drugs, and mental health and substance use disorder services. Your certificate might also have lifetime and or annual dollar limits on health benefits, end quote. The Affordable Care Act protects people against these insurance company abuses. Yet the expansion of these junk plans puts the power back in the hands 
of big insurance companies. And let me be clear, American families do not want to go back to the days when health insurers can discriminate against people with pre-existing health conditions, women and seniors, by denying them coverage or charging higher premiums simply because they get sick. As I have said in this chamber many times, the people of Wisconsin want both parties in Congress to work together to make things better by making health care more affordable. I've heard from several Wisconsinites who want to know why the President is working to repeal the Affordable Care Act and take away their protections by expanding these junk plans. They are frightened that if this sabotage of our health system continues, insurance companies will again be able to deny coverage or charge higher premiums for the more than 130 Americans who have pre-existing health conditions, again, including more than 2 million in my home state of Wisconsin. I heard from Carrie from Baraboo. Uh, Carrie is a three-time cancer survivor, two breast cancer diagnoses, and one melanoma. She experienced her first diagnosis at age 29. Now at age 61, Carrie is able to get the health care she needs without being punished financially for having a pre-existing condition. Carrie is worried that if the Affordable Care Act is repealed, that she could lose her health coverage or could be charged more because of her pre-existing condition. Another Wisconsinite, Keith, in Brookfield, recently wrote into my office about what health care means to him and his family. Keith and his son both have type 1 diabetes. Both of them have health insurance through the Affordable Care Marketplace that allows them to afford the insulin, glucose test strips, and other medications that they need. If the Affordable Care Act is repealed, Keith and his son likely would not even be eligible to purchase one of these junk insurance plans. They could be denied coverage entirely due to their pre-existing condition. We really need to act to stop this sabotage now. Mr. President, I want to protect the guaranteed health care protections that millions of Americans depend on. And that's why I've introduced legislation with my colleague, Senator Doug Jones of Alabama, to overturn the Trump administration's expansion of junk insurance plans, because we should be increasing access to affordable, high-quality health care options. The entire Senate Democratic Caucus supports this legislation, along with the two independents that caucus with us. The nation's top health care organizations, representing tens of thousands of the nation's physicians, patients, medical students, and other health experts, support this legislation. Anyone who says they support health care coverage for people with pre-existing conditions should support this bill. Mr. President, as if in legislative session, I ask unanimous consent that the HELP Committee be discharged from further consideration of S-1556, the Senate proceed to its immediate consideration, that the bill be considered read a third time and passed, and the motions to reconsider be considered, made, and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Is there an objection? Mr. President, reserving the right to object, um, let me just say that uh, the plans to which the Senator from Wisconsin is referring are plans that thousands, tens of thousands of people are buying. And one of the reasons they're buying them is because it allows them to buy the insurance they want at a price they can afford. And I can tell you, as I'm sure the presiding officer can and probably everybody here can, that when they travel across the country and you talk with farmers and ranchers and people who are buying their insurance in the individual market, the individual market has blown up. It's exploded. People are paying $3,000 a month for premiums, $36,000 a year 
with huge deductibles. So what they're doing is they're dropping coverage because they can't afford it. And one of the reasons they can't afford it is because under Obamacare, there were so many mandates and requirements, it drove up the price. So you had these skyrocketing premiums, higher deductibles, higher co-pays, and that's precisely why the administration, I think, decided that let's take these plans and give people an opportunity to buy the insurance they wanted at a price they can afford. And so literally tens of thousands of Americans are now in these plans. And what the senator from Wisconsin is saying is we're going to throw all these people off these plans. And what does that do? That puts them back out probably uninsured, which is what a lot of uh, farmers and ranchers in places like South Dakota are doing, is they're just dropping coverage because they can't afford it. Who can afford to pay $3,000 a month? That's what Obamacare has, has left us. And that's why we need new solutions. And this solution is one that allows people to buy a plan that they want at a price they can afford, coupled with association health plans, which the Democrats, I think, here in the Senate are also objecting to and opposing, which are also giving individuals opportunities to join larger groups and spread their risk and, and drive down their premiums. Uh, we need plans that people in this country can afford, and more and more people are going to be in the ranks of the uninsured. So, Mr. President, I object. Third. Mr. President, Senator from Wisconsin. I am disappointed that my Republican colleague have, uh, has once again chosen to, um, well, it was a different colleague last time, so that my colleagues have once again chosen to object to protecting people with pre existing health conditions. I, would my colleague yield? Senator, I would be happy to yield. I, I appreciate my colleague. I am in such strong support of your legislation, the No Junk Plans Act, and we'll speak briefly on it after you've concluded your important remarks. But apropos of what the distinguished senator from South Dakota just said, isn't it correct that, of course, a plan is more affordable if it doesn't cover anything. I'd be interested in my colleague's reaction to that because she's the lead sponsor. I remember being in Wisconsin, seeing the wonderful support that folks there have for my colleague because she's been a leader on these uh, issues. And I'm just curious because uh, certainly uh, my friend from South Dakota is a distinguished member of the Finance Committee, works with Senator Cortez Mastow and myself, um, often works with us on matters. But unless I'm missing something, he said that what he's interested in is care that's more affordable, but it doesn't cover anything. What's my, my colleague's thought on that? Well, I would uh, concur and say that the reason they've earned the nickname junk plants is because Frankly, some of them are hardly worth the paper that they're written on. If you think of, first of all, they do not have to comply with some of the very important protections that we included as part of the Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare, uh, especially to protect people who had been ill once before or had been injured once before, people who have a pre-existing health condition, um, maybe a chronic condition that will require medical care throughout their lives. And in the old days, where apparently the Republican uh, senator wants to return, uh, there were all sorts of abuses, I would argue, that insurance companies could employ in order to uh, limit their uh, exposure, if you will. So they had annual limits. They had lifetime limits. They had the capacity to drop somebody from coverage after an illness uh, uh, developed. They had the capacity to say, no, we're not going to offer you insurance. Uh, they had certainly the capacity to charge a discriminatory premium based on the pre-existing condition. And uh, that um, causes great concern. I just saw uh, recently a report about how much uh, typical, I don't want to put it this way, a woman with a breast cancer diagnosis who requires uh, chemotherapy and radiation treatment and medication, uh, how much 
she would be anticipated to spend out of pocket if she had a junk plan at the time that that diagnosis was made. And it was on average $40,000. $40,000. So we also need to talk about another impact that this, these junk plans have. And that is that if you think that you have a really good chance of being healthy uh, for the next year, and uh, you decide that, oh, this is a risk that I can take, you are then fundamentally uh, changing the structure of the marketplace for everyone else. Because you can anticipate that this is a choice that healthier, maybe younger people will take. And it has a distorting impact on premiums in the marketplace. And in fact, that is why these plans were curtailed under the previous administration. And now this administration is uh, greatly expanding these. Um, they are no longer short term. They are long term. And uh, a lot of harm will come. Uh, I wanted to just uh, conclude um, that when we have an administration that first fought legislatively to repeal the Affordable Care Act, that then acted administratively to undermine and sabotage the Affordable Care Act through all sorts of, uh, again, administrative executive actions, including defunding the uh, state navigators who help people make wise selections for their insurance and uh, uh, also limiting the open enrollment period. Uh, when we have an administration that has decided to go to court and ask the court to strike down a U.S. law in its entirety, uh, we know that there's sabotage going on. And I think that the choice for the American people couldn't be clearer. We want to make things better. And the administration, um, enabled by uh, uh, some of my Senate Republican colleagues, are uh, walking down a path that uh, has led to 2 million people losing their health insurance. and. Uh, others at grave risk of losing it in the future. Uh, with that, uh, I yield.